Yeah, hi. Just going to make a video today of uh, the various methods that you can use to sharpen a chainsaw chain. So the most basic method that you can do, and one that's been used for many, many years and still works well today, is the humble file. Uh, works quite well. Now, one thing I'll say about a file is don't buy one. Make sure you buy at least, well, they sell them in a pack of three at still, so I only buy still files. Uh, about $10 for a pack of three, but I always keep about half a dozen. Now, they don't last for a really long time, so if you can't feel them taking metal off, throw them in the rubbish and get another one. Now, how do you file a chain? Well, depends on what chain you got. Most chains are set at 30 degree angles. That 30 degree angle that we're talking about is this top plate. This is the angle as opposed to uh, running parallel. So it's 30 degrees from, from the chain. Now, you want to make sure that when you push the file in, that you keep the file level, parallel, so that you'll file straight, not up in the air like this or down in the air. Now, if it's a brand new chain, it's a good idea to have a look at it, even with a magnifying glass, or just to just to have a look how the actual grind is, is you know, how it is. How have a look at the angles. But normally, if you place that file into the groove, you'll see the thirty degrees. Because if you if you're too much this way, you'll see a gap in the tooth. If you're that way, you'll see a gap in the front of the tooth. If you're that way, you'll see a gap. So you'll find the angle. It doesn't take much to find the angle now. What you have to do is maintain that angle as you push that file through. Now, the best way to do that is use two hands. And you push inwards and upwards, because especially upwards, because you want the file to take a little bit of metal off here and create a nice sharp edge, as well as the back of the tooth. Uh, you want to create an edge. Now, most of the teeth are chrome plated on the top and at the side. So it's a matter of holding the file and you can rotate as you push forwards. Rotate, push forwards. Rotate, push forwards. Now, I'm only just sort of doing that as a practice run. That's not really sharpening the tooth. Uh, you put a little bit of pressure there, but not enough. But the main thing is that you use the same amount of strokes per tooth. So if that chain came off the chainsaw and it had done a bit of work, it might take three strokes, it might take four strokes, it might take five strokes. If it takes five strokes to make a beautiful sharp edge on the top and on the side, then make sure that you do all the teeth the same on the far side and on the teeth on the near side. Uh, after that's done, you need to check your rakers. Now, there's two ways to do that. But the best way, without complicating anything, is get yourself one of these gauges from Still. They're only worth a few dollars. And what you do, you place it on top of the tooth. You take a file, and if the rake is sticking above this point, you'll feel it. If you can feel a little bit of resistance, take it off. Give it one, two, maybe three little files. Yeah, oh, that's okay. That, all right. So if it took about three files to remove that metal, it'd be safe to assume that you'd be able to do that to all of the uh, rakers. So do your rakers with three of them. There is another one out there on the market, very similar. You put, put the unit on like that, feel the raker at the front, grind him off. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. There is another unit, this unit here. This has the markings put on the guide for you. 35 degrees, 25 degrees, 30 degrees. So it depends on the chain. Most chains are 30 degrees. So you would hold this at 30 degrees. Hold it nice and level, 90 degrees. File forwards, take it off. File forwards. Now the only thing that I dislike about one of these things, you can't see too much because of the... The guard, the guard covers a lot up, so you really can't see what you're doing now. 
you'll see on some videos some people will recommend drop it down 10 degrees now if you drop it down 10 degrees what you've got to realize is that if this is the back of the tooth it'll pivot on the back of the tooth and you might find out that it's not filing enough on the front of the the tooth so be very careful when you use one of these that you're doing it correctly if if you find out that the top of the tooth has a slight tilt by 10 degrees and it was made that way then it's safe to assume that you uh, to file it uh, at 10 degrees so just try and follow the profile that's already there if it's a new chain or it's only been used just be aware of certain angles now the other angle that's probably important but not so much with a file is at the angle that this angle here which is roughly about between 50 and 60 degrees which is about something like that so the file creates like a c-shape whereas the uh, drop grinders you set the angle to uh, what you want if you've got a model that actually has uh, the angle now the other one that we use which has only been on the market a few years is this steel unit here uh, and the idea of this it has has three files in there you can see the three files that you sit it on the teeth it's already set at 30 degrees so you will hold this parallel to the chain and push forwards bring it back push forwards push forwards now additionally it has three files because one for the left one for the right side of the chain in the middle it automatically will grind your rakers to the the, the right height these are very popular at the moment so yeah now the other thing that you can also do is use a vernier gauge and you can actually check the length of the tooth so if you've got a chain that's fairly old you might find that the teeth are all over the place so it's not a bad idea that if you're using a file if you can get a vernier and check the length of the tooth or alternatively if that's uh can't be done you can get one of these little plastic cards that has a bit of a measurement on there so you can sort of like uh measure the teeth on the uh, other side it's got like tooth length i don't know whether you can see that a little bit difficult to see the writing on it it's like a ruler but you could also use a ruler now typically on a brand new chain you roughly got about eight millimeters of tooth before you hit the witness mark now i would probably take off no more than about 0.2 of a millimeter between each filing so that would mean that I would be able to use the chain at least 40 times before I hit the witness mark and throw it in the rubbish. Okay, so that's that's roughly what the files will do. Uh, there is another unit that's uh, available, which I brought, but I'm not a big fan of, and that's the 12-volt still quick sharp unit. The whole idea of this is that you've got your 30-degree markings on here, and you hold it parallel with the the bar and you've got your 30 degrees and you would grind away so not a big fan of those uh yeah because they seem to be a bit fiddly for me and it also comes with this lubricating stick and yeah a bit messy i brought the unit they're about 60 dollars could have got at least 10 10 files for that at least if not more but anyway uh, i brought the unit but hardly ever use it it comes with various stones yeah anyway we will go to the next way uh, of sharpening the chain and that is with a electric grinder so here we have the basic electric grinder which i'm sure that you've seen these before in the shops uh, the blue one is your basic grinder now the most important thing about using one of these is this wheel has a nice radius like the file that you would use now on this particular grinder it is a very small wheel about 3.5 millimeters uh, this particular guide actually has uh, it's got 3.25 so on that 3.25 i don't know if you can see it where my thumb is that's the radius that you're looking at so your wheel should have that radius and 
if you put that into the wheel and that wheel looks all right now i've only ever dressed that wheel once or twice since i've had it so and the way that you do that is that you would use this little dressing stone and then you would rotate it around to get a nice beautiful curve and then you would use your template to try and match it up so that's what that's for uh very basic you've got your markings here uh so you know set it to 30 degrees use your adjuster here and at the back can't see it but i'll try and pull it down you may be able to see it yes there it is that's the little knob at the back for the depth very basic very cheap but does the job uh we go go on to the next model which is much better the only thing that i'll say about this particular unit extremely happy with it but it's a chinese copy of a oregon uh, grinder so yeah works quite well uh, much better than the blue model that i just showed you so we pop the chain in like so in this particular one lock it down now the same sort of thing this wheel here use the card and in this case it's a 3-8 chain I can't see if we can get a better view of that might be better if I can get a better view uh, I think you can see that but that's pretty good yeah. as you can see that's that fits quite well if I can get straight on maybe even the other side a little bit there we go. There we go. Now, the left side is okay because that's the side that does all the grinding. The right side could be dressed up, but yeah. Anyway, that's, that's what this card's used for. To make sure that if you're not happy with it. Okay, so that being done, currently uh, the saw is set up for 90 degrees and that is to do the rakers so if you change the wheel to a say a six millimeter or even bigger you can adjust the stops on this and do your rakers and what happens you bring the saw down to the stop after you've set it all up and you'll move the, the move this over the rakers probably a good idea flip that back there's the raker you'll bring it down to the stop and move the move the raker backwards and forwards to, and just grind it slowly and then you'll do that to every raker so to grow to actually do the chain we put the stop in here this particular chain is an oregon oregon chain it's a full uh, chisel what that actually means is that it's actually cuts very good but it's, it's got a point a very sharp point if we zoom in there and see that uh, let's see if we can see that point yeah i think you can see that yeah, so it's a very sharp point there uh, the advantage of that is it will cut through clean timber very good the downside of a full chisel is that if it gets a bit of dirt in it uh, in the timber once that point goes blunt forget it now if you go to a semi chisel you don't come to a sharp point you've got a bit of a radius on there so the radius chain will stay a little bit sharper if it touches a little bit of dirt so yeah that's the difference between the full chisel and the semi chisel they uh, both cut but one will cut more aggressive which is the one that's in there the full chisel is a much more aggressive cutting uh, tooth but not very forgiving if you hit a little bit of dirt okay so what we need to do now to set this up at the back we'll set this up to 55 degrees so at the back we have a at the back of the unit which you can't see there's just a graduation that shows from 90 degrees to 60 degrees but you've also got it in the front as well so anyway it's set up at 55 degrees normally they will tell you that uh oh, i think we'll just zoom in there we'll just see it yeah there it is 55 degrees okay so that's what that's set up that angle next angle to set up on an Oregon chain, that is, on a still it's a little bit different. Oregon recommend a 10 degree tilt. Now, if we're going to do this tooth here, which is at the back, we will tilt that way. 
and we will rotate to 25 degrees tighten the unit up and there we go we tighten the unit up and let's bring the first tooth so that's the first tooth here we need to make sure and see if we can zoom in on that to get a better view okay you can see that quite well now so what we need to do now is make sure that as we bring the grinding disc down without it running that it doesn't it just touches the tooth so it, you see the difference there so okay what we need to do is slowly bring that up and close that gap you can hear that and then lock this mechanism here and check your depth it could possibly go down a little bit so that's just a matter of adjusting we'll just see if we can adjust that so at the back uh, you'd be able to see it here this screw on top here if we adjust the unit down we'll just to drop it down a little bit yeah. okay so roughly if you can see I'll just see if we can zoom in a little bit more. The radius of that wheel lines up with the top of that tooth. So if you look at the top of the tooth here, this edge, this edge right across here, as we drop this wheel down, the radius of that wheel will touch that edge. And if we just rotate the wheel, you, you can hear it. So it's just touching. Okay. Locked in a position. Locked up here. Set at 25 degrees. Now, you'll start the, the motor. And you'll bring the saw down. And just touch. Once, twice. Just a couple of times. You'll just touch it a few times. Now, even though that you've got... That lock will lock that down tighter. You still find out sometimes you've, even though that you lock that in there, there's still a little bit of movement because of the rivets. Not much, but there is a little bit of side movement there. You'll get that, but it's not really going to do anything. So, if we start the saw, oh sorry, the uh, grinder. Now, that's all you need to do. Inspect it. Now, make sure that if you've got really good eyesight, 2020 vision, you should be able to see that. And that should be a beautiful, nice... We'll see if we can get a better angle, if we can come around here. Uh, see if I can sort of get that... A little bit better you might be able to see that tooth yeah can't really see it that good anyway but you're looking for a nice shape and the shape that you're looking for is like a C shape uh, and what you want is which which I have this little drawing when I use a file but the grinding disc will have the same effect you want the the grinding disc to lay into the tooth like that with yeah, that's 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 the way that the it, it should the wheel should go into the tooth and, and the files are same file is a, yeah about a millimeter and a half higher than the tooth so you want that nice profile now, if you only take off about 0.2 of a millimetre off a tooth, roughly there's about 8 millimetres of tooth on a brand new chain before you hit the witness mark. So if you was to take off 0.2 of a millimetre, then you would find out that you would be able to use this chain about 40 times before you hit the witness mark and you throw it away. So, yeah, probably, look... <laughs> 
The tilt is uh, what the tilt does, uh, to give you an insight, because this particular model, which is a copy of an Oregon, is it tilts this way and it tilts backwards, uh, and then you've got the neutral position. Still don't recommend the tilt. Uh, look, the tilt. What the tilt actually does is put 10 degrees slope on this tooth. So if, if we were to look at the tooth again, I'll just see if I can zoom in there. See if we can get a nice... See if I can explain this a little bit better. Okay. What that 10 degrees does... I might be able to actually explain it better on here. If to look at this piece of metal here, you'll find out that both those grooves are the same on one side. But on the other side, one of them is totally different. And the one on the right hand side has been ground with 10 degrees tilt. So you can see what actually happens with the 10 degrees tilt. When we tilt this 10 degrees this way here, that you'll find out that the tilt goes downwards 10 degrees. So therefore, when the side plate cuts into the timber, the chip can exit probably much easier. I'm, that's the only reason I, I, I think that you could have a tilt. Uh, so that you've got clearance behind this edge. So the trailing edge is lower and the swarf or the sawdust, or whatever you want to call it, the chip, can exit much better. And that's the only reason I can see that you've got a tilt there. So the other big mistake that a lot of people generally make when they're using one of these uh, uh, units, the grinding units, is that they tend to bring the wheel down too quick. I was watching one video on YouTube and the guy's got the handle and he's just going bang, bang, bang. Really aggressive. No, that's not the way that you uh, use any type of grinder. You bring it down nice and slowly and then you just touch the tooth very lightly and bring it up off on off on. The reason that you do that is so that you don't overheat the tooth because if the tooth starts to turn blue you'll lose the temper. So just remember that when sharpening any chain on any type of grinder and you go very slow. The slower you go uh, the cooler the tooth will be and you won't lose the temper and you'll get a nice grind so don't get too aggressive take your time make sure that before you start grinding any chain that you've set it up properly all your right angles and when you adjust this part here which is to push the tooth into the grinder set it up by hand like I showed you before so that the wheel barely touches the tooth and that's your starting point and then bring it down nice and slow and just lightly grind the tooth and if you're not happy with the way that that tooth is ground just turn it in a little bit more grind a little bit off inspect it stop the wheel have a look make sure that you've got a nice radius a nice c shape there yeah and if it looks nice and sharp on the edge, then you've got it set up properly. Then you continue doing the 18 teeth. This is a 20 inch chain. So there's 18 teeth on the left. There's 18 teeth on the right. Then it's just a matter of rotating to the other uh, side and doing the teeth, 18 teeth on the other side. So yeah, look, I hope this video helps. Uh, it's the, the last point that, that I will make even if you're using a file or any any type, whatever whatever you use to grind or clean up your chains, do not be don't use a lot of pressure. First, go very light, even with a file. Apply a light bit of pressure. Inspect the tooth, and the other thing is, before you sharpen any chain, any chain at all, 
take the chain off so it comes off the chainsaw inspect all the teeth just have a quick inspection and then you'll find out have a look to see if there's any damage it'll give you a pretty good idea of how aggressive or how light you'll have to use the grinder or the file anyway look i hope that video helps uh certainly there's a lot of information out there about sharpening chains this is just another video and but when i first started sharpening chains i was after a lot of information as well so i just hope that this helps okay thanks for watching bye